What's up everyone, it's Kaskobi here, and as you can see, these are not the normal types of controllers that I'd be showing on my channel. I'd obviously normally have something like this out for, you know, playing songs and stuff like that, but we're not doing that. Today I'm going to show you how to turn one of these controllers into something that does this. Let's get started. But before that, a quick word from our sponsor. Melodics is the go-to learning app to help you develop your coordination skills and rhythmic ability when playing Launchpad and other MIDI instruments. With over 400 lessons and fine-tuned guided learning sessions, you'll be playing like a pro in no time. Head to the link in the description below to find both the free trial and my 20% off discount code to get started with your learning journey. So over the past few months I've been looking into ways of basically connecting game controllers like this to Ableton through a Max for Life device that I've been making and so far I've managed to get a few things work and as you can see here are a few examples so we've got the Xbox One controller, we've got a PS4 controller and a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Those are just some of the ones that I've got to work so far and as we go through this video you'll see some of the other ones that I've got to work as well. So as you can see here in Ableton, I'm in a completely blank project and what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to insert a new MIDI track just like this and normally what you do to set a like launch pad or other kind of MIDI controller as an input, what you do is you come to this little drop down menu and you would kind of pick the uh, interface that you want to use to send MIDI to this track. But the way we're actually going to do it with a game controller is instead of setting it up as a MIDI device like that, we're going to drag my gamepad MIDI input max device and we're going to put it here. And as you can see, it's already found my Xbox wireless controller. And you can see if I go into the little drop down menu, it can see quite a lot of other things that are connected to my computer as well. You might not have all of this stuff show up. Basically anything that shows up in this menu after you have the controller connected is something that might actually work with this device. So when adding this device, it's very important that you have your controller connected first before you add this device to Ableton or open the project with this device in, for example, otherwise it won't quite see this device. But once you've got this device here, you can see in the little drop down menu here, you can see that it sees the Xbox wireless controller and the controls you have here are pretty simple. The only things that you really have to edit are the transpose window here so you can adjust the pitch of the controller notes or anything like that. So now any of the buttons that you press on here will come out of this device. You can see the little uh, bar next to the plugin is showing the velocity of each of the buttons that are being pressed and you can actually see that it's showing the notes down in this corner here of what's being pressed as well. So there's a couple of other features on here as well so you can see that each of these buttons does actually do something. You can obviously click down on the sticks as well for something like that and you can also use the left stick on any controller as a pitch bend so you can change it like that. And I've kind of tried to make all of the uh, buttons between controllers kind of uniform. So if we take a look at the Xbox controller here, you can see that the down arrow shows a C1, left is C sharp one. That would be the exact same on the PS4 controller, for example. So down on the D-pad here would also be C1, left would be C sharp one. So it's kind of uniform between controllers. So you can kind of make something if you have an Xbox controller and if you send it to someone who's got a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, it should work exactly the same way as well. So now that we've got the MIDI set up here with uh, the main device, what you can do is you can go and grab any sort of a VST or general instrument out of Ableton or anything like that. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to grab a piano and stick that afterwards as a very basic test. And as you can see... You get a few different button controls there and it works with the pitch bend that I was talking about as well so you can do this but the reason I've mapped the pitch bend to the stick is basically because on a regular keyboard you've kind of got the pitch wheel that goes up and it will like spring back to the middle which is exactly what the stick does so the x-axis of the stick doesn't really do anything and none of those directions do anything either because I felt like Having two pitch bends would act a little bit weird, so there you go. So I'll show you the layout for the Xbox controller here, and you can see that what I was talking about with the D-pad down arrow being C1, for example, 
that mapping will stay consistent across all of the controllers that I'm about to show you. And as you can see as well, this works perfectly fine over Bluetooth. So no cables plugged in here or anything like that. This works perfectly fine with Bluetooth if you can get your controller set up uh, with the rest of your computer in some way. All controllers will connect a little bit differently, so I'll leave it to you guys to research online how they need to be connected to your PC or Mac because they might be different. Speaking of being different between computers, some of the button mappings that I'm showing you here might be different if you're on Windows. I believe that actually the Mac has more capability of detecting different kinds of input with these controllers. So on Mac, for example, you can see if I press the Xbox button there, it shows a C2 note, which I believe doesn't work on Windows, which is kind of interesting. You'd kind of think that Windows has better support for the game controllers, but but no, apparently not. It seems to work best on Mac. So along with the pitch bend that I mentioned up here for the left stick, what I've also done is the triggers on the back of any of these controllers aren't mapped to a specific note, but what they're mapped to instead is the aftertouch uh, feature of MIDI, which if you've not experimented with before, it's a kind of modulation feature that you can mess with uh, and it kind of gets triggered after you press a button. So what you can do is you can kind of press one of the MIDI controller buttons and pull the trigger at the same time and it will kind of affect the sound if you have aftertouch actually mapped to something within your preset. Which is something that you can do in Serum, so I'll show you that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my Reese's Puffs preset that I made a little while ago, it's a nice little Reese space kind of thing. And in this patch, I have a couple of things mapped to the aftertouch modulation, which I've been usually changing with the aftertouch feature on a Launchpad Pro, but I've changed it so that the triggers on this Xbox controller can map that kind of thing in the exact same way. So you can see now. And then you can kind of integrate this with pitch bend as well, so you can do all of it in one go. So there you go, that's some of the things that you can do with the Xbox controller. So obviously when using this, I feel like the use of a game controller isn't going to be so much for learning melodies or stuff like that. It's going to be more kind of drum pad triggering, sample triggering, kind of in the same way that a launch pad works. So what I've done here is I've kind of set up a example project of how exactly that can be used so that you can see the connection between the two devices. So you've got here a kick sample as the down arrow on the D-pad. You've got a hi-hat on the right bumper. And on the main Xbox button here, you've got a snare. So in sequence, you can kind of make something like this. Just as a quick example there, you can see, even over Bluetooth, the connections from this controller go straight to the launch pad and actually trigger lights and sounds and everything you'd expect from a normal controller. So what I'm going to do now is to connect a new controller, I need to delete the GamePad MIDI Max device from Ableton because otherwise it won't detect any kind of new controller. So you can see now I've got the PS4 controller connected and this one seems to act a little bit weird and doesn't seem to want to connect over Bluetooth to my Mac so it works over wired and realistically it does work better over being wired anyway because the latency will be a lot less. So I'm going to go back to my plugins folder and I'm going to re-add the GamePad MIDI Max device. And you can see that wireless controller now shows up, which is apparently the PS4 controller, uh, even though it's literally wired, but it, it can't tell that. It's a bit dumb. So you can see that this basically works in the same way as the Xbox controller, like this. With that pitch bend as well. So this has got a few extra buttons as well, kind of higher up in the octave range. And you might have noticed while I was pressing the touchpad there that it was changing the aftertouch in the gamepad window. And that means that you can basically use the touchpad on the PS4 controller to modulate your sounds like this. So it kind of uses the y-axis of the touchpad there to change the aftertouch just like the triggers. So 
So yeah, there you go. That is something that you can do with the PS4 controller that's a little bit different to the Xbox controller. So I'm going to also try it now with the Nintendo Switch controller, which you can, I think, only do over Bluetooth. But if you manage to get it work over cable, then well done. As you can see, I've already reinserted the device here. And as you can see, Pro Controller shows up here. And it kind of works in the same way as the Xbox controller, except that the triggers on the back are actually just buttons rather than sensitive triggers, so these just act as regular buttons as well. So there's no actual aftertouch control with a switch because there's no pressure sensitive part of the whole controller. But you can see it does still work, uh, so if you want to use uh, something else with that controller you can try something else, you can try like a regular glass piano. <laughs> Of course, Pitch Bend still works with any controller that has some sort of joystick. Basically, every button sends out a different kind of note, and if you're confused about what note it's sending out, you can see, as I've said before, in the bottom little corner here, you can see exactly what note it's sending out if you want to map it to some sort of drum pad or sample or anything like that that should work perfectly fine as well. So I'm gonna try it again now with the PS3 controller just to show off some of the differences that this controller has. And this is the only controller that I've run into so far that actually has pressure sensitive buttons. So you can see that when I try any of these buttons, it sends out like a normal note message, but you can see every single button has an aftertouch mapping on it. So you can see if I press one of these, it's actually detecting the pressure sensitivity of those buttons, just like a velocity sensitive button on a Launchpad Pro. So I'm going to swap out the piano thing here for the old Reese's Puffs patch that I had. My good old classic Reese base with aftertouch functionality. And you can see without even touching any of the triggers. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. The PS3 controller is weirdly velocity sensitive on nearly all of its buttons, which is a very nice feature to mess around with if you're trying to make some interesting sounds with it. The velocity sensitivity, as far as I know, with the PS3 controller doesn't seem to work on Windows, which is a little bit odd, but if you want to try it anywhere, you'll need to do it on a Mac, because this doesn't work in exactly the same way. And I believe the PS3 controller does also work over Bluetooth. <laughs> yep, it does. I just needed to give it a quick kick. <laughs> so there you go. PS3 controller is one of the weirdest out of the bunch. So I've been working pretty hard to try and add functionality for as many controllers as possible. So that's the majority of the controllers that I have at the moment. But I also have plans for the Xbox 360 controller. I'm gonna try and get the Oculus Rift controller to work. That's not gonna stand up, is it? Oh well. And I've also been experimenting with the Wii controller as well. But no luck with any of those so far. I think my Xbox controller is next up on the list of things to add. So what I've got now is I've got a controller connected that I haven't quite configured with the software yet. And as you can see, it detects the controller that I've just added. But what I've done instead of actually making like a profile for it, you know, like letting it have pitch bend and everything like that, I've just kind of remapped all of the notes generally so that they do give a MIDI output, but it's not probably not exactly what you want. So this does still work. And as you can see, it's showing some notes there, but those notes are quite low. So hence why I've added the transpose feature. You should be able to move those notes up a little bit. Let's move it up a little bit further. So yeah, that still works. So any controller should work. If you can get it to show up in this menu, it should work just fine and then you can transpose it into place. But as I've said, I do plan on adding a whole bunch more. So when I started making this plugin, I figured I'd kind of go all out in making it and add something that I'd not really seen done before. Because I've seen a couple of people like Sean Wasabi using like a PS3 and an Xbox 360 controller, but I haven't really seen anyone use this. Yeah, I wasn't kidding about this device being pretty diverse. So as always, I'm going to just quickly reinsert the gamepad MIDI device so that it can see the new controller that I've added. And as you can see, it picks up the Cytec X52 Pro flight control system. And as you can see straight away, some of these notes already work with it. This also works with aftertouch and pitch bend. So the Y axis of the joystick here will act as a pitch bend. And I've got a couple of CC controls here. So you can see that when I turn dials like this, it changes the CC values down in the bottom corner of the plugin there. 
And then for the aftertouch of modulating the rest of the sound, well that's mapped to the throttle control of this controller. So as you can see, you can get some properly weird sounds out of this controller, but it's such a nice way of doing it considering it's so physical, and you can kind of experiment with what sounds great in a whole new dimension of modulating sound. But realistically, since when did you have to flip up a safety switch just to press a piano note? I just think that's really cool that I've been able to get that to work. So there you go everyone, that is a quick look at everything that I've been able to make so far with my little gamepad to MIDI converter device for Ableton Live 10. Hopefully you'll all find a nice little use for this and hopefully I'll be able to see it in some of your performances in the future. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in the next video. Stay safe.